Now let's see what the components of a typical CMS look like. A CMS needs a reference color space to compare gamuts and to make the necessary adjustments. It's simply an objective way of defining color. Most CMSs use a flavor of the CIE color models that have been around since the 50s. The CIE, by the way, is another international commission that defined a color model which gave us a standardized and a mathematical approach to defining color. The CIE lab space, or the LAB space, is one flavor of this color model that's used as a reference space here. The CIE XYZ is another. And if all of this sounds like math to you, it's because it really is just that. These are theoretical, mathematically defined color models. Luckily, you don't have to know how they work. You have to be aware that a reference space is big enough to reproduce any color visible to the human eye, and that it exists independently of any device which is why it's set to be device independent. Device profiles are up next, and these are absolutely key to a CMS, because a CMS gets all of the gamut information about all of the color devices from these very important profiles. Simply put, a profile is a fingerprint of the color space of a device. So for example, when a scanner embeds a profile in a scanned file, it tells the CMS about the colors that the scanner produces. This helps when the scanned colors are translated into the reference space, that is, when they're handed off for interpretation. As we'll see later on in this tutorial, there's a huge range in the quality of profiles that can be made or bought. And this in turn affects the quality of color matching that you can hope to achieve downstream. So there are three kinds of device profiles. Input profiles for devices like scanners and digital cameras. Display profiles for monitors. And output profiles for printing devices. These profiles, by the way, show up with the .icc or .icm file extensions on your computer. When you install a scanner driver or software that comes with a new printer, you'll notice a whole slew of these profiles that get installed on your system. As you'll see later on, these are chosen or selected in different places when you're engaging the color management options in Photoshop. Next up is the all-important color management engine, or the CME. This performs the actual conversion from one device's color space to another. It turns out that the CME also manages the appearance of bright and saturated colors that would typically lie outside of a device's gamut. For example, to successfully print this lime green color that you see on screen to an offset press, the CME that you choose would process the color a certain way. There's a handful of color engines to choose from, but the good news is that the differences between them are slight in most cases. And finally, we come to rendering intents. These come into play when you have a particular kind of artwork where it's critical that it's reproduced in a certain way. Let's say you have an image with a logo in a vivid and saturated color. You would then choose a rendering intent that preserves that color intensity and appearance. Photographic art, on the other hand, might need to be reproduced in a more pleasing way rather than attempting to match the original exactly shade by shade. So intents help you to finesse your color matching decisions. So now that you've learned about how color management operates and its different components, let's see how this plays out in your work inside of Photoshop. When you open an image, you specify a source profile. For instance, the scanner's profile, or one for your digital camera. This assigns a particular meaning to the RGB or CMYK values that are in the image. Next, you tell Photoshop which printer you'll be outputting to. This is the target profile. The CMS then uses the RGB values in the scanner's color space, compares them to the corresponding values in the printer's color space, and the color appearance is then optimized to either maintain the color relationships that are present in the image or perhaps to be mathematically correct. And in all likelihood, you'll end up with a printed image that's consistent with the appearance of the original image.